We have any recognitions then, but I'm not. We do have some recognitions. I believe that um, Dr. Mitchell has some AP teachers and students who are going to give a presentation for us and speak a little bit to our capstone course, correct? We do. We have um, Kristen Steen and Kelly Tobias and three students that they will introduce when, when they're ready to present. Um, they're going to talk to you about AP, the AP Capstone um, class that we added this year. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mrs. Steen, this is Mrs. Tobias, and you'll very soon get to meet three of our wonderful students. Um, we are starting the, we started the AP Capstone program um, this past year with Mrs. Tobias teaching the first level of the course. It is a course that is highly regarded across the country. Um, in fact, it isn't everywhere, and you have to apply to actually receive the accreditation to be able to have it at your school. And what we've learned, especially this year in our time at working with Hampton, who's integrated the um, project within their school for the last three years, is that students who are seeking to achieve above and beyond um, maybe what you would think um, or what they may think or dream past high school, maybe they're looking at those Ivy League schools um, and they have to take a portfolio to have an interview. We have found that the kids who take their portfolios from Capstone um, at least from the one district we've worked with, have all been accepted to their Ivy League schools, which is an amazing story because they have proven that they can do that type of level of work. So to give you a little bit of an idea of what that level of work is, um, is that in the first year that they worked on this year was the team presentations, the individual research-based essay and presentation, and end of course exam, which they've just finished and are very excited about. Then they'll come to me next year and they'll work on an academic paper that consists of about four to 5,000 words, um, and including an oral discourse and debate discussion at the end, much like if any of you have gone beyond your bachelor's degree and continued on to a master's or a PhD program, um, that you had to give a dissertation. It's very similar to that, and we have our own 17 and 18 year olds doing that. But what's really cool about it is that our nine through 12th graders, this is open from 10, 11, and 12, so we have some young kids that are in here too that are doing this amazing work and we're very excited about it they don't all have to be ap level necessarily walking in they may not have taken an ap course coming into mrs device's course but they um come in and they are greeted with welcome arms because we're very excited for kids who have that passion to dig deep into subject area beyond what you might think um so this the college board created this program <coughs> Um, after talking to higher education institutions about what they're looking for in their students. And the overwhelming answer is that it's not about content knowledge, it's about academic skills. So the framework for these courses, they are not specific to any particular discipline, which is what makes them great for any college-bound kid. It's about learning how to question, learning how to do research, and um, synthesize sources and come up with solutions to real world problems, to work with a team, to share um, the burden of information, to have specific jobs assigned. Uh, these are all skills that are applicable not just in college, but in life after college. When we talk about the skills that we want our kids to have, this program really hits all of those college readiness skills. Um, and as I mentioned, it is not a discipline specific course. So when you hear from our kids talking, um, in the same class, they've all done completely different projects. Projects about literature and politics and science uh, and really anything that they're passionate about. And those can all be going on simultaneously in the same environment. What's really also unique to this program is that you can receive two things. One, an AP Capstone Diploma um, or Certificate. So successful completion of the AP Center on Research, you can receive a certificate for that. And the AP Capstone Diploma is a successful completion of AP Seminar and AP Research plus four AP courses and exams um, from eight years of high school. So we have our students starting AP earlier than ever before. Um, and we're grateful that we have as much opportunity as we have for them to be able to kind of dig in, even in freshman year. And some of those students will have passed four AP exams, and if they're part of this program, they to receive an additional diploma which is also for those parents who are dollars and cents and have kids that have um, that are in college right now, you know how much those credits are. Um, and they can receive a lot of additional funding and scholarship money as a result of that. So that's what we're at least really hoping for for our kids too. 
Okay, um, I'm going to let the kids talk to you about how it's been beneficial to them. Uh, but in terms of how it's beneficial to our school, um, it really helps us differentiate ourselves. A lot of the schools that we're compared to all the time don't offer this program. It's something really unique to us, and I think it's a selling point. You know, Upper St. Clair or South Yet, they don't have this. We do. And I think that's a big deal. Um, it's a very flexible curricular model. Um, our curriculum is what's going on in the world right now. It's research databases and articles. Um, so it's always changing and it's always exciting, but it's also something that um, is very cost effective because we're not buying a lot of hard copy materials. Uh, we're doing real world research with things that we already have. And it is a student-centered classroom. You know, that's really been a, a focus on how do we get this, the emphasis on the kids. This program does that. They're in charge of their learning and they're learning their passions. And that's why I think this is an excellent addition to our district. Um, so and as I said, I want the kids to tell you about what they've learned. So uh, Mira, Kara, and Vicki. They weren't anticipating this large of an audience. So. <laughs> <laughs> the applause are appreciated, trust me. So I'm here to speak today about part one, which is our team project. So we eventually chose a topic, and we each collaborate on a, a different set of lenses. So each team member picks a different lens, as shown before. So environmental, political, scientific. And we collaborate to come up with a group solution to the specific problem that we had identified. So my group, uh, <laughs> consisting of myself, another student named Brianna, and another student named Kayla, we wanted to look at animals in captivity. And one of the skills that we learned was identifying the problem. So animals in captivity, big problem, but you have to really narrow it down. So our final question was, to what extent should animal testing be used to facilitate cancer research, which is actually much more complicated than it may seem. Um, Michaela chose to focus on the economics lens, um, where she found that the outcomes of, of animal testing proved to be not profitable, that the testing that is completed doesn't lead to accurate or efficient results. Um, Brianna chose to focus on the scientific lens, um, and she found that some of the treatments tested on animals have proven beneficial, but it's extremely rare that these uh, solutions transfer to the human being side. And I chose to focus on ethical. We had actually read a book previously, previously in the year called Ishmael, where it evaluates... <laughs> um, we had a lot of fun with that book. <laughs> um, it evaluates the, um, the scope to which humans have extended past their ability to control the plant that we live on. So I was really intrigued by that. So I focused on the ethical side of this. And um, I eventually found that a lot of sources um, discovered that. Sorry. <laughs> a lot of sources um, uh, found that animal testing is unethical because the analogs, animal, animal analogs that we use, as they become more accurate, so chimpanzees, it errs on the side of almost too human-like that we don't want to test. So to get accurate results, you have to be more unethical. Um, so we ended up coming up with a solution. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we evaluated several options. Um, mechanical human bodies um, testing on chimpanzees, which we found to be unethical. Um, we ended up finding this solution, which is called organ on a chip, developed by uh, researchers at Harvard. So basically, it's a tiny organ on a microchip, um, about this big. Um, it functions the same as a human organ would, blood, oxygen, same deal. Um, and you can test cancer on, uh, cancer treatments on it. Um, so we found that it was systemic, cost-effective, and ethical, and accurately mimicked human reactions. The interesting thing about this is that we actually reached out to um, re researchers from Germany, from TISUS, and we emailed them because we weren't sure if the chips could actually be used for cancer research, and we got a lot of good responses from them. Um, we gained the skills of talking to an actual company. Think of three high school students speaking to a huge scientific company across the globe. We were able to collaborate with them and find the proper research that we needed. Um, we also gained the skills, I know myself, and I can speak for my group members, we're not really comfortable talking in front of large groups of people as I am today. <laughs> but we gained the skills, and I feel like I'm doing an okay job right now. But <laughs> my, uh... <laughs> but we also learned that there are 
are new technologies that uh, are being developed every day that can facilitate um, in meaningful and pro profitable research. And as long as we learn to look for the right solution and identify the right problem, we can solve basically whatever. Okay. 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 So I'm here to talk about the part two, which is the individual research and presentation. So we were working on a stimulus packet, which held all of the original sources for us to base our research off of. This year it was all based around perception, like senses, and also how we perceive other people. Um, there were two sources in particular that I looked at, which was one from Alice through the looking glass, and another one about a Muslim woman, woman talking about her, um, how they are perceived in the West. And with these stimulus packet materials, there's a lot of room for interpretation. So it's not just you're limited to what the sources give you, but you can also kind of expand that. So I went from uh, perception and the sensory details to um, talking about the perception of people of color in literature. So this is just about us having a starting place, but ultimately the research top topics that we choose individually can be things that we're interested in personally. So the main part of this is the research on the first part. Um, we have to understand the issue and explore it to the stakeholders and the complexity of the issue. Um, and we have to evaluate the issue objectively before we form an opinion in our argument. So my uh, research um, focused on how as a minority, people of color have difficulty publishing their books with more diverse people and characters. And then we have to create a well-reasoned argument in our essay, uh, situating the problem in a larger context and incorporating these diverse perspectives, uh, the limitations, and responding to any rebuttals. So my argument was that minority voices in the industry are becoming louder, and they can't be ignored, and that we should address this by uh, addressing the disparity within the uh, executive part of the publishing industry. So in the presentation, we basically have to summarize this argument and uh, the solution that we present. And we have to defend our research and explain how it's uh, relevant to today. Uh, so my solution was to create a society backed by authors and people of color that provides publishers uh, to uh, dedicate to racial diversity and fantasy literature. So, I've gained um, a lot of skills and knowledge through this research. Some skills are using reasoning and evidence and logic to defend in my argument, and evaluating the arguments of my sources and my own argument to strengthen my message and strengthen the argument, and presenting alone, which as a sophomore, I don't really do in any of my other classes, so I got that skill from this as well. Um, and the knowledge, the ability to explore this topic, people of color in literature, which is not really a topic that's discussed in any of the other classes. And it's, I'm able to explain how it's important for us to consider this topic and be informed enough to add my own voice to the conversation and make suggestions on how we should do it moving forward. We forgot to mention that there are two juniors and a sophomore. It's <laughs> about the research aspect of this because it's something I'm really interested in doing for the rest of my life. Um, I have some ideas right now, nothing final because I've had like two weeks since my exam, um, but hopefully I can do some research and, and learn more about what I plan to investigate over the summer. Um, I do know that what I want to do uh, would relate to material science. This is kind of my inspiration. This book uh, is written by a material scientist which you don't really know what material science is. It's a crazy combination of chemistry, physics, and engineering and design. And I think it's really interesting. Um, he looks at different materials and looks at them on kind of a molecular atomic scale, but also how they have influenced our lives since the very beginning. Um, and that's, that's something that I find uh, really, really interesting. It's something I want to investigate further. So another big part of my life is music. I've been playing the cello for almost 10 years now. 
Um, and that's also something I would like to pursue as an adult. So I was thinking, maybe I can combine the two worlds. Um, one area of investigation I've kind of started to look into right now is what makes an instrument, the cello specifically, sound good? What affects its tone quality? And is there a correlation between what the instrument is made of and what it sounds like? So I want to look at um, sampling different cellos. I have a teacher who belongs to the Pittsburgh Symphony, and I have uh, classmates and students who are in my regional orchestra. And every single cello is different. It's based on, based on age, kind of wood, where it comes from, the kind of material the strings are made of, um, and the shape. Shape is one thing I can't control. But I can go around and sample different people's cellos, um, categorize them based on their age and what material they're made out of, and then play those samples for musicians and non-musicians and have them rank the tone quality and see if there's any correlation. Um, I actually had a lesson today and I talked to my cello teacher about it and he said, yeah, that's a pretty big project. <laughs> I was like, well, that's good because I have all of next year to do it. Um, so I think it would be really, it's not just about like the instrument and talking to musicians, but it's also um, a pretty interesting physics problem. So I'm also excited to be able to reach out to researchers and professors at universities that I'm considering going into college. Um, I'm going to be applying at the beginning of next year, and that's ironically when our proposals are due for our research projects. So hopefully the two can uh, relate to each other and maybe help me get, get that boost and get into more prestigious colleges. So um, I don't know what I'm going to gain from this yet, but <laughs> what I hope to gain uh, is the ability to come up with my own original ideas. And with AP research more than AP seminar, you're doing your own research, so whatever you come up with is, is on you. Um, with AP Seminar, you are doing research, but you're looking at what other people have done. Um, and with, with AP Research, you're able to go out and uh, conduct the experiments by yourself, which is pretty amazing. Um, uh, along with that is efficiently um, and accurately collecting this data. That's something I've never really done before, um, except in like a chemistry lab in high school, which is you know kind of different. With this, there really isn't a right answer. It's kind of whatever I uh, decide and deduce from the data that I collect. There might be no, no correlation between material and sound quality, um, but it would be interesting to see if there is. It's really investigative. Um, I think that this would also help me to uh, approach problems differently. I know that I'm going to come up with different issues during this, and, and I might not always know the answer, and that's really exciting. Um, but also, this is kind of my own personal project, and you don't really want to pick something that you're not interested in. So rather I pick this uh, idea with instruments or, or any other idea that I come across over the summer, I am excited um, and interested in, in something that I like. Um, if you end up researching the entire something that you, you don't really like or aren't interested in, it's not going to be worthwhile. So this is also kind of a journey of self-discovery. Um, kind of want to ask if you have any questions for either teacher or any of the students at all. Oh, all the way up there. Yes. How does a student um, get recognized to get qualified to get to get into the academic program? It's open to any student that is in grades 10 through 12. And they come to you and they um, just during course scheduling. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Any questions? Thank you for your time. Thank you, Thank you guys. Fantastic example of what the educational process is like. I think we can all be proud of those kids in that, in that program. Continue. At this time, I would like to open the microphone up to anybody in the audience who would like to make a public comment. If you do, please step up. Give us your name and address, and try to keep your comments to five minutes. Or 
To the board, some of y'all know me as Mr. Wilson, Robert Wilson. I know I get exempt because uh, I work for the district to this most august body, uh, distinguished uh, board. Uh, what I want to say tonight, I know my time at Chartier's Valley is, is uh, fastly coming to a close, and uh, I love the district. Many people know that. You've heard me talk about it on TV, uh, on the radio. I have no qualms. The Chartres Valley School District is one of the better school districts in America. And I'm very sincere about that. Um, we have some great people that come out of Chartres Valley. For the young lady who didn't know, we got a rare apple that uh, controls the New England fleet. Educated out of Chartres Valley. Uh, you have a mayor of a major city, Pittsburgh. Educated out of Chartres Valley. You have several professional athletes, baseball, football, and basketball. Educated out of Chartres Valley. You just saw the future of America, which most of us know. Some geniuses over there. <laughs> Coming out of Chartres Valley, you have a thriving theater, uh, arts program, and uh, musical program starting at the intermediate school and working its way up. They're all coming out of Chartres Valley. So you should all be proud. Uh, we got great teachers at Chartres Valley. I know, I work with them. Out of Chartres Valley, starting at the intermediate school. I'm sure the primary is very biased in the middle school and high school, but your best teachers come out of the intermediate school. <laughs> I want to first say to the board that uh, I appreciate the superintendent and assistant superintendent. The situation happened about a month ago, and uh, they got right in involved. And I really appreciate that. Uh, she got down with it, and I was. Uh, Hey, that, that's my type of superintendent. And of course, the super, assistant superintendent was there. Uh, let me just say this, that uh, uh, I would hope and pray as time will go on. I know that you talked about the budget, some problems here and there, but uh, that you wouldn't cut any staff. No way you find a way to make it happen. Because you do have, I, I, I sit on a couple boards nationally, education, and when I wrap up my career in education somewhere down the line, uh, that I'll be actively involved in Harrisburg and in Washington, you do have some of the best teachers in America. I talk to several different personalities nationally, and I always bring up the benchmark is Sharp Tears Valley. If you have not or got programs in place like Sharp Church Valley, then you, you below the benchmark. That's how much I feel about this district. I'm not a person because I work in campus safety. I choose to work in campus safety. I got several degrees. Now, since I've been here, the assistant superintendent, I'm sure, the solicitor, I mean, there's been some issues. There's been some racial issues. <coughs> But we try to work with it. I know that there's a couple people in the district who would love to see me gone today. <laughs> but I choose when I want to leave. I was accepted when I came to this district by Mrs. Volcano, uh, Mr. Zissis, Mrs. Kander, and the Carnes. And we all became a big family over in the intermediate school. Majority of us. <laughs> There's only a couple. The super, the assistant superintendent knows we've talked, and I said I've shared my concern. I said, hey, look, you know, hey, but I'm a strong personality, Mr. President. 
And uh, I would hope and pray that in the future, you heard the young lady talk about one of the future geniuses over there about minorities being involved and being in included. Uh, trying to work with Dr. Bishop and Mr. Tally as far as some minority programming, reading, etc. Uh, coming into the district. Trying to do that in a hurry because I know my time uh, will be coming to a close. Now I know the assistant superintendent, me and him have an agreement. When I do decide and make that decision, I'll come to him and I'll tell him the party's over. <laughs> and it will be over. I stayed, the solicitor asked me, I thought you was going to retire. I said I was. But everybody know that because of one student that benefited all the students, they said, Mr. Wilson, you can't leave because you're a very integral part of my life. And then the mom came and said, Mr. Wilson, you can't do it. You just can't do it. I was offered a job running my own department in another school district. Uh, the assistant superintendent knows a friend of mine who's a superintendent somewhere else in the middle of the year. I stayed. I stayed because of that one student that felt that I was such a necessity in their life to make it through. And she is making it through. That it was important for me to turn down that job to stay at the Great Shark Cheers Valley. And that's what it's all about, having commitment to the district. All these teachers that you see in this room, most of them I know, and all these workers <coughs> that's in this district, school board, I want y'all to hear me, and the superintendent, these people come and bring it every day. Every day they bring it, Mr. President. They don't care what color a student is. They give them the best education that is around in the country. I see them. I know what they can do. Our kids are, 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 are thriving. And it would be a tragedy to hear that there would be furloughs in the district. So let's find a way. Now there was some fat out there that the district, I, I talked to the superintendent and I gave her a suggestion. There's another suggestion and I'm going to say it right now. Charles Chuck McCarthy is a, is a great public relations man. You don't need to advertise for another position. That's, 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 that's almost a hundred thousand dollar waste. Give him about three or four thousand dollars and he'll be satisfied. <laughs> I'm closing, Mr. President. I'm closing. I'm closing. I'm closing. But please, whatever you do, and most of the school board members I know, please don't cut the budget at the expense of the teachers and the staff of the, the great Chartier's Valley. Thank you. My name is Darlene Lucas, and although I'm not famous, I graduated from Charger County. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you from? I live on Green Tree Road in Virginia Mansions. Thank you. Um, I have been, and I understand what you folks are going through as far as the budget's concerned, because I've served as a school director in another school district over the years, um, probably a thousand years ago. But um, I have certain concerns for the primary level. I see that according to the budget, and it was the first line on the budget that said that the salary decreases by four point whatever percent. And in asking questions, you know, the only obvious is that we're, we're eliminating teachers. I can't see anything else. Uh, I have an issue with that. Certainly, I have no problem with a tax increase. I mean, people pay taxes to educate me. It's our responsibility to educate 
the future generations of America and of this area. So I had no problem with that. The problem I have is balancing the budget and really the um, uh, I'm trying to find the word now, but the um, it's the, expense. It's the expense of the youngest kids in the district. Last year, you eliminated language uh, at the primary level. You eliminated another teaching position. I'm afraid that the four people that you are planning on eliminating, again, are going to be from the primary level. I don't understand what you're doing. Why can't you reassign people who have been able to teach in a, in a lower level to knock down to the primary or the intermediate level? Why can't we do that as opposed to eliminating and increasing tax, and increasing class size? It's certainly a disservice to these kids. It's a disservice to their parents. It's a disservice to the community to not use the foresight and be a little more fiscal responsible. Um, I guess that's about it. I job you're doing and I know it's a difficult job and I'm sure that you're all putting in at least 40 hours a week at the school board in order to do the job you do. But again, thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Russ Peterson. I'm on one wall drive. Um, I realize that 80% this may seem like a large part of the budget, but you know, and that's devoted to your to your you know, your staff and their uh, benefits. But the buses aren't going to teach teach anybody, so where else would the money go? Um, I certainly I don't I'm not privy to the decision that you made in the other room regarding the budget. I certainly hope that it is not cutting a single person. Um, I believe that you also have some people that are leaving, and I think there's plans to let positions be eliminated due to attrition. I also would hope that would not happen. Um, you know, our, we have the lowest taxes in the county. Um, people re reference Mount Lebanon and South Fayette. We were paying you know, probably at least triple or quadruple what we pay in taxes. The people are more than happy to move there. If our schools are high quality, people will be happy to be here. If we start to chip away, I spoke to three people after the last meeting who took the CV off of their house hunt because of the talk of reducing staff. Um, I mean, that's really, can't do that. We really have to maintain your programs. I have a seventh and ninth grader. They've both they've thrived in the district. <clears throat> I see many of the people that um, contribute to their success here in the room today. I'm not as eloquent as Mr. Wilson, <laughs> but a few people are. Um, but I, I certainly hope that there's no plan to let any positions be eliminated. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Diane Peterson, 1706 Moynell Drive. Um, I'd like to start by saying that I truly appreciate the amount of work that you all must do, the amount of time, energy, and effort, and thoughtfulness that I believe you put into your decision making. Uh, I'm sure it's not said often enough, but I appreciate what you do. Um, I did want to say, you know, with regard to a budget deficit and possible staff reductions, please increase the millage to the allowable amount under the Act 1, you know, in the Pennsylvania State Code, and please continue to do so. Um, it's certainly worth it to keep good staff and good teachers. Um, as other people, and as Mr. Wilson, again, has so eloquently said, um, the teachers are our greatest asset, and that's why we are still here. Um, and I did want to mention, kind of as an aside, with regard to the voter referendum which is on the ballot, uh, many of the people I spoke to were not aware of it, um, and I don't know what's allowable in terms of informing people in advance, whether it's permissible to send information out in the mail in advance. Um, I know that when, I actually talked to several people, that when they went to the polling place, the people working the polls gave them the wrong information. Even though it was printed right there, they were yelling it out while people were voting, oh, this is for the building, this is for the new buildings. Um, 
Yeah, it was. We were reported many of those. Okay, okay, and I didn't know if you were aware, but it's pretty distressing. <laughs> and unfortunately, it has a strange as it is, even though we create the referendum, we're not allowed to have it. I didn't know. It's a very strange law. Okay. It is okay. the law. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you know, I guess, uh, really, last but certainly not least, I just want to reiterate how important I feel attracting and retaining good teachers is in the district. Um, as my husband also said, we have a seventh and ninth grader in the district. I personally have always had incredible positive interactions with every teacher that I've talked to and I would hate to see anyone, any staff, leave the district and I think it would very negatively impact not only the children's education but the reputation of the district. Thank, Thank you. Hi, good evening. My name is Lori Workmaster. I live at 342 Twin Oaks Road. And I am a 20-year resident, actually, of Scott Township. And I do have um, two children in the district. One is a sophomore in high school, and the other one was um, a 2015 uh, graduate. I have chosen to write down some of my thoughts so I could keep it, keep, it, keep it moving forward. So although my children's time in the district is coming to a close, I just wanted to make sure that my concerns were heard so that we can take positive action or that you all can take positive action um, for the future. I do realize that some of this financial mess has grown exponentially over the years, and this current administration and school board are really not at fault. However, it's now time to display your leadership qualities and come together as a collaborative group and provide the district with a reasonable and responsible resolution. Develop a common sense approach to fiscal responsibility. As the last lady did speak um, and say, our millage is one of the lowest in the county. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. We're, we're even below Duquesne area um, schools. So the fact is, all of these teachers that are in the room um, here today that have had a direct impact on my children's and everybody else's children's um, success and future success um, is at stake. So I hope that you, um, you take that into consideration and, and do the right thing. Um, I think that both the administrators and the school board directly responsible for the budget need to hold themselves accountable and do the right thing. Um, you know, we need to manage a budget within the means of the taxpayer dollars and any state subsidies the district receives. You know, we can't continue to deficit spend, so do the right thing, you know, and make a plan. You can't overcome all of these, um, all of this mismanagement overnight and dump everything on us all at once. You know, make a plan. I think we're all reasonable here and know that we want to continue the superiority that we have, um, that we've created here in Chartres Valley. Um, so let's just do the right thing. You know, I, honestly, um, you don't deficit spend and then decide to cut critical jobs and resources to simply cover up your mistakes. Because honestly, when I balance my checkbook at the end of the month, I don't continue to spend irresponsibly. I honestly don't have the option of furloughing one of my children to save costs. <laughs> Although, <laughs> and, you know, with all the respect, you know, maybe we eliminate a couple unnecessary administrative positions that are out there that carry a six-figure um, salary or eliminate or reduce some of the, <laughs> eliminate or reduce the stipends that I believe you receive as school board members. Don't you don't? Don't I'm, I'm glad to know that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but um, the last I checked, the, I believe the superintendent's salary is three times that of a teacher and most likely five times that amount of a paraeducator. <laughs> Two to three times higher. Then maybe that's not correct, but I know some teachers that make 50000 and I think the superintendent makes ex excess of 154000 So I guess I didn't do my math correctly. So all I'm asking you to do is teachers and paraeducators, not administrators, have the most direct impact on the lives of our children, so just do the right thing. Um, the district mission statement can communicates the mission of the Chartres Valley School District, a community dedicated to shared leadership is to graduate students who achieve personal success, providing an exceptional academic foundation in a safe, nurturing environment that inspires creativity and innovation while embracing diversity. So I just want to address two areas of this mission statement. First, and that is the students who achieve personal success. Please continue to remember that this is not solely for the mainstream students. 
special needs students can also achieve personal success and deserve the right to succeed. In fact, it's the law. So as a reminder, the Federal Individuals with Disabilities Education Act establishes a free, <coughs> appropriate public education for all students with disabilities in the least restrictive environment. Do not use these students and their teachers and paraeducators as scapegoats. Resources and dedication to this segment of your student population has waned over the years and needs additional attention. Also, I urge you to embrace your decisions in this area with empathy. It's easy for you to cut services and overlook these students because they aren't scholars or highly recruited athletes. They deserve a chance to succeed. Your mission statement even addresses it and it talks about embracing diversity. So let's be honest, diversity does not solely mean race, color, creed, or national origin. It also includes students that are intellectually and physically disabled. Based on past decisions, I'm pretty confident in saying that not one administrator or school board member has a child with a disability. If I have misspoken, I apologize. Your actions speak louder than words and they re need reevaluated. and I'm asking you once again to do the right thing. The second area is the safe nurturing environment. Taxpayers should not have to really pay for the student's safety. So that's why I kind of was against the referendum. It's our, your responsibility to adopt a budget that addresses this issue and keep our children and our students and everyone within the building safe. Just like it's a corporation's responsibility to provide a safe environment for me to work. They don't take a paycheck deduction for me to, to keep me safe. Just once again, do the right thing. Um, unfortunately, in my mind lately, um, you've mismanaged the budget. In fact, you've deficit spent. You know, this retirement issue, first of all, I'd like to ask at some point, you know, how did we get here? The retirement issue is not something that is developed overnight, and there needs to be a plan in place so that, you know, we can overcome um, this deficit, because I think that's why we all work. We all want to retire, right? And that's why we're working so hard and saving our money. So instead of focusing on the very valuable assets inside the buildings, you decided to construct a large, elaborate, and very expensive buildings to project a positive image of the community and surrounding areas. I think we've completely lost focus. So um, you're now messing with the livelihoods of families by threatening to furlough teachers and paraeducators. The most important assets in this district are the students, the teachers, and the paraeducators. Let's be honest. Teachers spend a lot of time with their children from a very early age. They not only have an impact on them as students, but they help shape and prepare children as responsible adults for the future. Teachers provide guidance and support. They provide a listening ear when needed. Many of our teachers are CV alumni, which in my mind speaks volumes to the characters of these individuals. It was important for our teachers to not only pursue education as a profession, but it was impo important for them to do it in Chartres Valley. I applaud them for having the desire to bring their experience full circle and teach in the community and schools where they grew up and knew they could have a positive impact. CD obviously played an important role in their lives and they are now giving back to the district by teaching and mentoring, mentoring our children so they can enjoy a positive and su successful education. We're lucky to have these teachers in our district. Do the right thing and find a way to, pers to preserve their jobs so they can continue helping our children prepare for their futures and reach their goals. Thank you. Hi, I'm going to try and be short and sweet. I'm Heather Downey, 401 Bluefield Drive. Um, as we talked about in the last meeting, and in case anybody missed the meeting before this, um, Mr. Kramer talks about how the building is on budget and maybe even potentially a teeny bit under budget, depending on what happens. Um, so I'm glad that that is kind of pushed aside and tabled. Um, but there was also talk at the meeting a couple of weeks ago about better communication and transparency. And seeing this budget today, where it's come from the last thing that we saw a month ago or two weeks ago, gives me a little bit of hope. But questions. Questions on how those numbers got reduced. Were they reduced because they were overestimated? Or were they reduced because we're making actual cuts? Um, so that's something that I think if you want to keep that transparency and that communication with all of these people here, that's what you need to do. Um, because we went from having a surplus just a few years ago to where we're at now, which is definitely getting worked. Um, 
But I want to know, was that poor plan? Those retirement numbers, there are estimates that come out every year about how much that's going to be. Was that this or another board not reacting correctly to it or not? I'm going to go back to what Mr. Wilson said. A lot of churches rally, first of all. Um, but the alternative can't be cutting staff. There's got to be other alternatives. He is a person who, even that one child who spoke to him and said, I need you here. You're important. Every single staff member in this district has at least one kid who feels that way about them. Whether it's a secretary or a lunch lady or whomever. That one kid needs to be important in this board's eyes. So don't take their role models away from them. And that's it. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jennifer Bridge. I live on Lindsay Road here in Scott Township, and I have a son finishing second grade and a daughter who's about to enter kindergarten next year. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I just wanted to speak to um, success in terms of my son and seeing his growth on a personal level because I'm looking around here and I'm seeing a lot of his teachers. Kindergarten, art, music, gym, library. Um, these are the people that have made my son who he is and he's a very successful but challenged first grader. <laughs> Um, and I have a daughter coming in, and I'm very concerned about her class size because we just had orientation a couple weeks ago, and we were told, as parents, we don't know what the class size is going to be. We've gone from knowing that it was going to be 20 to 21 students per class to we don't know. And quite frankly, that's not good enough for me. To stay in this district, that's not good enough for me. So I've talked to a lot of intelligent people who are my neighbors and who also have children enrolled in this district who are quite frankly considering moving to the South Fayettes and the Upper St. Clairs and the Mount Lebanons because we're not getting the quality of education that they're supposedly getting. I just checked Pittsburgh Business Times ranking of our district is now 34 behind Upper St. Clair and South Fayette and the other neighboring districts. So it's down two points from last year. We were 32 a year ago, and now we're 34. And if we continue to lose the people that matter the most to this district, then I don't understand where, where we're going as a district in that vision. And I'm very concerned about that, because I will not stay. And I know many people who won't. And we're never going to attract any more families into this district to make it what it is if we don't address that. Um, <coughs> I don't want to see a single child at the primary school level go without these people. Um, we used to have Spanish last year on the, at the primary school level, in kindergarten, first, second grade. Do you know how important that program in and of itself was? Um, being, having a second language, being fluent in this day and age in a second language is core critical for their success in the future, and we eliminated it like that without concern or, or, or listening to the parents. I had my son taking, two, you know, taking private lessons with a fantastic Spanish teacher back there who also has children in the district all summer long to prepare him for first grade Spanish to find out the week before that the program had been eliminated. I mean, it's, it's like we're hemorrhaging, and I just want you to realize how important it is on the people level side of this. This, this, this family, my family, who lives in this district, who has two children in primary school. You know, and I throw my hands up in the air. <laughs> you know, please, don't eliminate the people who matter the most, the teachers. Thank you. Obviously, everyone seems to know me here tonight. I'm Rachel Emeritus. I live at 2080 St. Andrews. And um, I just had a question. I, I, everyone here I hear is talking about 
the millage rate being increased, and that's going to correlate to more teachers and lower class sizes. But I didn't see that from, from the presentation, so I'm just asking, is that what this is about? Is this millage going to just keeping our teachers and increasing teacher sizes? At this point in time, just so you know, we accept comments from the public. We don't turn into a question and answer session. Oh. We can certainly address it during the, the, the meeting, but I would rather hear your comment. Oh, okay. Well, that, that's what I was. Just well, to know we well, were all talking yeah. about the right thing. <laughs> so, because there's a million people, we don't want to get into a question and answer session. So, we will address it for you. Okay. okay. Good evening. My name is Al Cugini. I live at 38 Colcrest Street. Um, I. I'm addressing you guys tonight uh, not just as a taxpayer and a voter, but also as a concerned parent about this little girl who's uh, definitely given the primary school staff a run for their money. My hat's off to them, so thank you for <laughs> thank you for your hard work this year. Uh, you've, uh, you, you've earned your paycheck. <laughs> Speaking of which, um, I'm also an educator, uh, and uh, I teach one of those what you'd call the expendable subjects. That I'm a music teacher. Um, I've been on the business end of this before. Um, now, I do appreciate having read on the, the website, the superintendent's comments, that uh, the worst case scenario is what was posted to the public. Now, there were three worst case scenarios. The best of the worst case scenario was 33 teachers, roughly, I believe. Uh, that, that's, that's a lot. Guys. That's a lot. Um, and I know what happens when those teachers go. Uh, when teachers are eliminated, not, class sizes increase, yes, but also the choices increase, or it, choices decrease. Kids have fewer places to go. Um, being someone in, in the position of teaching one of those creative arts uh, where, I mean, what a great way to start this meeting, by the way, the, the showcasing student work, not just learning basics, but applying those basics, applying their knowledge, and going above and beyond. Going above and beyond is exactly what we want our kids to do. It's impossible to do that without teaching staff. Um, I teach in a beautiful building. I, I, I teach uh, with some, in some really great facilities, and I tell you what, those facilities aren't doing a darn thing for my kids, except for me. I've done a lot with very little, okay? So what I'm asking you guys to do, um, as my daughter comes out of uh, kindergarten and into you know, first grade and beyond, uh, I want her to have teaching staff. I want her to have opportunities. I, I'd love for her to be presenting in front of the school board someday. Uh, I'm here to, to implore you to find a way to balance the budget uh, without taking away the most as, as has been said a number of times here, the most valuable uh, part of your school district. Like I said, I've been on the other end of it. It's not a lot of fun. Um, I, I'm, from what I've seen so far, I mean, it's, it, it, we've, we've had some great experiences to this point. I'd like that to continue. Um, I, I'm, I'm also aware of the other options. So uh, I hope you'll take my work seriously. I hope you'll, you'll uh, take the words of all the other folks who have spoken tonight seriously, uh, because it's a very serious issue, uh, not just to staff, but to uh, the parents and voters as well. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Tony Roscoe, and I live at 1400 Green Trigger. I'm a newer resident to this district, and I am like many of the people who have spoken already don't have children in the district. I did have a nephew that graduated a few years ago and based on the education he received here is now going to RIT and it has a very bright future ahead of him and I'm very proud of that. I am concerned that when, as, as someone who works in business, I know that those same pressures apply to education, academia, and the nonprofit world and I've worked with nonprofits and served on their boards. So I know what the bottom line truly means when it comes to money. But there's more to the bottom lines. More and more organizations are recognizing that. So I don't know what metrics you've used to make some of the decisions or the scenarios that you're putting forth. But as you come to decision making, use the right metrics. We, in, in my company, we talk about having the right people in the right roles doing the best work of their careers. I believe that you have many of those people in place right now. You may need to restructure. That could be possible. But I am very concerned, having come from the Stowe Rock School District, where I grew up, and living in the Montour School District, where I spent the last 10 years before I moved here. I see what the budgets, how the budgets impact. I see how the teaching staff impacts the students, and what ratio 
uh, disproportionality can do to those students. And I worked as a poll worker during the primary two weeks ago, the last week, seems like two weeks ago, uh, last week in Collier 6. And I know that we had a very poorly educated, not to your fault, but to your point, a very poorly educated electorate at that point. And I fear that in our future. We have to have an educated electorate. We need our students to really understand the choices that are in front of them. And I hope that you all get the right metrics to make this decision and understand that the dollars aren't the last number. And as someone who doesn't have a student at stake, but understands that even more so than the value of my home and the possible decrease in that value due to changes to the school district, I don't care. I will pay my fair share to ensure a better future and to ensure I have a good community. Hi, my name is Kim Galvo. Some of you may know my last name. How are you? And we met at breakfast uh, here at the Intermediate uh, last week. I don't have anything prepared. Um, I just wanted to talk to you as a parent of a child who is autistic. The teachers in this room have got, he's in fourth, fourth grade now. The teachers in this room and the paraprofessionals have gotten him to where he is today. He has come so far. I have, I'm very involved. People know me. I'm at school all the time. I talk to teachers. I talk to paraprofessionals. They are spread so thin now. Paraprofessionals are running, leaving a child that they probably should be with to go put out a fire because another child is in need. When my son was diagnosed, the rate was 1 in 68. The rate is now 1 in 48, and it's only getting worse. Mental health is, needs to be a priority in this district. And the thought of cutting the amazing teachers and the paraprofessionals who help these children be successful is, I just, I, It's unfathomable to me. I apologize. Um, I just, you know, I just hope that you really, I won't even pretend to understand the numbers, but I'm speaking to you on a human level. There are many kids in this district who don't get the support they need because there aren't enough paraprofessionals. There are families who don't know any better to ask for help or to advocate for their child. Other school districts, I have fellow district, you know, parents with children with disabilities in South Bay at Mount Lebanon, Upper St. Clair, starts at kindergarten, entry level, where the district, you know, the teachers, the district, the child starts, and they notice things. The district, the school, the administration approaches the family and says, this is what we see, this is what we would like to do. These are the modifications we'd like to make. In this district, you have to fight for what your child needs. And unfortunately, there are a lot of parents who may not know any better. And so you have children with behavior issues who aren't getting the help they need. And it's all trickled down. The teachers are doing way more, wearing way more hats than they should be. If if the money was put in place for the students 
and make sure that the students have everything they need to be successful. It makes the teacher's jobs easier. Please do not cut paraprofessionals or any teachers. Thanks. Michelle said lack 1595 spreading out drive. <laughs> I know where I live today. I, listen, I'm going to keep this short and sweet. You guys have heard it all, all day. Um, and th these teachers are amazing. They, for the last three years running, have consistently done more with less. But as I've used the word tipping point over the last two years, that's where we are. We are at a tipping point. You've asked them to give and give and give, and in every moment, they have risen to the occasion for our children, our school district. They have. They've done an amazing job. And with very little to no recognition for the, the things that they've done. The, you know, they, they don't have paper. They've, they've been buying their own supplies. That, that many of the things that we take for granted in a public school system have kind of been denied to them, but they've been making do around it. And I give them credit for that. And we also need to give them some recognition. And we kind of need to also recognize that you can't blame this on the retirement package again. I, I don't want to hear it anymore. Yes, it is a consequence that our district has to face, but so do the other 45 districts in Allegheny County. As a matter of fact, Every school district across the state of Pennsylvania has to pay the same percentage that Chartier's Valley School District does. So it's not just our school district suffering from this. So it can't be used as an excuse anymore. And I, I really don't want to hear it again from, from public, from anybody else. Um, number one. Number two, you guys, I have all the faith in the world in you. You guys can do this. You can balance this budget and still meet these kids' needs. I have absolutely the faith of the world in you. It, 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 it is. It's like, it, I, I, it's like buying a new rug in your house. Yeah, you don't exactly know exactly how much it's going to cost for installation because it's always 20% more. But the thing is, you buy the rug anyway. And the following week, you just don't use the expensive cheese on your salad. So it's a give and take. <laughs> it's a give and take scenario, and I know you guys can work it out. I have absolutely the, all the faith in the world in you. Don't look at me like that. I have faith in you, Eric. I do. I have faith in you. I have faith in all of you, but I did want to say thank you. Hi, my name is Vito Cedro. I live on Crosswinds Drive. Um, I wasn't planning on talking today. My wife, who's an educator, sent me to give her an update on what went on. <laughs> Some of you know her. Uh, I want to take a little different approach with you. Uh, I'm not an educator. I'm not going to pretend to tell you how to do your jobs as educators or advising educators. All of you were elected, right? You were elected. So all these people that are sitting here, especially the ones that have spoken, are your clients, essentially. They're your constituents. In my world, that's, that means they're your clients. I'd like to know what is so important to some of you on your tablets and your phones that you're looking at them in this meeting instead of listening to every word that came out of that last woman's mouth. I'm writing notes. From If I look at my tablet or my phone in a client meeting, my client fires me. I don't think any of you are taking this very seriously. I really don't. Now, that being said, consider this aspect of the, of the situation. Any of you that owns a home in this school district, I'm sure knows that your values have gone up substantially over the last 10 years. I've been here for eight. My neighbor, the real estate agent, says, 50, 60% increase. And no, I didn't remodel the whole thing. A big part of that reason, of that increase, was because of the quality of the school district. I have friends that are in their late 20s, 30s, that are trying to move out of the city, move in from the country, and they're looking at this school district. If you cut 
the amount of or the number of teachers if you're talking about cutting, you're going to have a big, beautiful new building that's empty. And all of your property values, including mine, are going to go straight back down again to 2008 levels. Maybe look at it that way. Protect your own interests, and at the same time, protect our children's interests. Thank you. Kara Joseph, 2007 Berkwood Drive. Well, I'm a student at Chartres College, junior. wasn't really expecting to speak tonight. Um, but after looking around the room and seeing the teachers that have uh, changed who I am as a person, um, I really realized that it was important for a student to speak. Um, I'm going to point some teachers out. Sorry if I embarrass anyone. Um, but it's not just the core class teachers, like Mrs. Tenney who taught me math, and Mrs. Heffley who taught me history. It's the teachers like Mrs. Kandrak, who taught me to love music, and Mr. Magalier, who taught me to love math and science, and Mrs. Mayer, who taught me to love learning. Um, I spoke tonight about finding new solutions to problems, and really making sure that we're evaluating the right problem. Sorry. Um, <laughs> any of these teachers being let go because they really play an important role in everyone's lives here in Charges Valley. Thank you. I'm Frank Brown, and I'm the uh, president of the Chartres Valley Federation of Teachers. You can see my group right here. You read the papers, and I know that I'm old, and I'm the only one that reads papers anymore, but you'll see that this narrative is playing out in districts all over Western PA and all over the country. And it's boardrooms packed with concerned parents, lots of teachers showing up to argue their um, place, and school boards that are trying to do the right thing. But I want to paint a different picture to you because Chartiers Valley is a different place. It's a place where people are working together, I assure you. It's 50 teachers or more that have shown up tonight not to demand things, but to show their support, knowing that Dr. Venata, Mr. Seltzer, Dr. Bixel, and the school board is going to do the right thing. They're going to do the right thing because they're stakeholders the same way that we are. They're stakeholders the same way that you parents are. They want to see what's best for kids, and I trust because I know most of them. Mr. Cora, I think you're the only one that has been here longer, maybe, than I am. <laughs> I know because I've had their children in class. I know them from being here. I know they care. I know the hours they put in. And I trust that the right thing is going to happen. And I think that you'll see that the teachers are working with this school board. They're working with the administration. The, the community is a huge part of it. But without any one of those stakeholders, we're not going to where we can get to. So all of us, we need to work together. We don't want to point fingers. Instead, I think we need to join hands and say, together, we can get to where we need to be. Thank you. Close the public comment set section with just a few comments of my own, and I think that the board would reflect um, um, and, and, and agree with most of what I'm going to say. You all being here tonight, and I've been on the board five years now, means more to me than than you can imagine. It's a shame that it took, um, but I would say a a. Uh, a lot of misinformation in the community to bring you all in. But I'm so glad you're here. We hear what you're saying. We understand where you're at. And we're going to do everything in our power to keep Chartier's Valley a great place to educate kids. That being said, um, when we took on, and I, I took on the responsibility of being a volunteer elected official, unpaid, uh, we knew what we were in. 
everybody says, are you nuts to get on a school? Are you crazy? I, you know, I own my own business. I take countless hours away, and I have for the last five years to, to help what I feel educate kids to the best of our ability. Um, and I would just like to go back to some of the comments that I heard during public comment and try to calm some of you and also correct some of you. Um, when I hear the word mismanagement, that, that, that is, in my opinion, an unfair statement. Um, this board has been and, and continued, will continue to be fiscally responsible. We have, a, we have a responsibility to both our students, our staff, and our taxpayers to do what we feel is right to get us to a point where we can educate kids to the best of our ability within the budget that we are on. We took on the, the challenge, and ch trust me, Building new buildings within a school district is no fun. We took on the challenge of bringing beautiful new campuses to life, not just because we wanted to, we had to. We were faced with crumbling infrastructure in our old, our old buildings. And you can ask the teachers in this room. We had, we had classrooms that were leaking water into them. We had uh, levels of, of, of buildings that were being 90 degrees on the top floor and 50 degrees on the bottom floor where kids were trying to get educated. We didn't do it just because we felt like building new buildings or to keep up with the Joneses. We had no choice. We either invested 30, 40, 50 million dollars into old buildings or we did something about it. And this board has spent hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours going through the planning process to do a couple things. To make great educational institutions for not only our kids to be in, but our teachers to be in and our administration to be in. It's important for us to have a great place for our teachers to come to work. It's motivating to our students. It's motivating to our teachers. Buildings, they, people say buildings don't educate. You're right, teachers do, but they certainly enhance the, the, the vision. I just spent last week touring our new middle school with some other board members and seeing the, the educational process in place in these new buildings was incredible to me. To see the job our teachers are doing using these new spaces and watching the kids grow and learn in a whole different way was totally enlightening to me and totally inspirational because I saw our dollars at work and it meant so much. So believe me, when I say we, we spent time thinking about these buildings and doing what we did, it was not by accident. It was by choice and we had to do it. And, and to, to, to go on to that point, we shrunk the footprint of our educational facilities by almost 25%. Over the next 50 years, just a reduction in utilities in those footprints are going to pay for this construction. We will benefit just from not having to heat buildings that were too big for us, to heat hallways that we didn't need, to have uh, cafeterias that now we use as common areas and multifunction these spaces. We thought this thing out. It wasn't by accident. We had a collaborative effort for over two years with our teachers, with our administration, with our community members, with our students. How do we build the best buildings we can build? It's been, a, it's been believe me, it's been a challenge and it's been a, and a, and a life commitment for me. My four kids were educated in the Chargers Valley. They're long gone. I have, my kids will never benefit from any of this. But I'm so glad that the future is here in Chargers Valley for our kids. Uh, just some other things about regard, regarding the teachers in the budget. We, were, we are not, and I'm, I, we, we said this at the last meeting, but we are not of the mindset, this board is not of the mindset of furloughing any educators in our, in our system. We are not. Correct. That is not our goal. And we, I, I'll say tonight, that is not what we're going to do. Correct. We will find a way to make this happen without laying off teachers. So. And I also said this last at our last meeting, but I also just caution you as parents, as teachers, when you talk about land values and property values and attracting people to our community, consider the fact what you're saying and when you're saying it in social media or anywhere else. Because once it's out there, whether it's true or false or a rumor you heard, it's out there forever. And it frustrates me to know that when I see something out there that I know is not true, but it's being sent through social media, 
it just it, it's it's damaging and it's it's self-inflicted wounds. So be careful how you react to things. Pick up the phone, call me, email me, email anybody on this board, email Dr. Venata. Get your your questions answered before you go to social media and, and put anything out there that you're not 100% as sure as the truth. Because we'll be glad to try to give you the answers and, and keep it. So our, our district is not hurt by false information. And I, I, my wife's a realtor. And I can tell you, property values, as, w as were addressed earlier, they are skyrocketing in this district. New communities are being built and filled quickly because people want to move here. So I am not of the mindset that this district is going the wrong direction whatsoever. I'm extremely proud of what this board has done, what this administration has done, what our parents and our teachers do every day. So please keep in mind, let's all work together, as Mr. Brown said, let's, let's be a great community and, and do the right thing. Can I have our solicitors? Uh, just announced that we had a, an executive session this evening to discuss a legal matter. We had one last week, as well, or last meeting, and I think I was remiss for it to announce that in public meeting, so just announcing that tonight. And, and just to follow up on one comment, there was one speaker that uh, referenced the board making budget decisions in executive session. That's not what happens in executive session. There are limited reasons why the board is allowed to meet and discuss in private. Uh, making budget decisions is not one of those reasons, and, and that did not happen there. It's, it's a legal matter that was discussed. Budget issues and budget decisions are made here in public. So, just a for point of information. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to get a motion to approve our minutes. Mr. Kearney? Tech. Mr. Court, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. On to our informational agenda. Uh, can I get an update on the education population? I don't have an update on the education population. One thing we can update about the education foundation, we are going to have a meeting. Right? We are going to have a meeting and to go over some aspects of it. But um, also, real quick, I would be remiss if I didn't speak to the award ceremony last night. The Education Foundation was present in that ceremony at our high school, recognizing some seniors graduating. They did a phenomenal job. Um, the foundation supports our students in a variety of capacities, and we're very pleased about that, and, and I'm sure our students are as well. So it was great that they showed up and were able to recognize some of our students. Thank you. And let me just explain to the public too as well, while we're here. <clears throat> Several of our board members also serve on, serve on another educational board, and they take time out of their personal lives to do that. That's why we go through this informational agenda to describe what that board member did at their other board um, during, the, during the course of their last meeting. So Mr. Kramer serves as our, as our board member out of Pathfinder School. Mr. Kramer also serves as the president of that board. Can I have the Pathfinder report? Um, yeah, last week at our meeting, um, we uh, the graduation is set. The graduation ceremony is set for June sixth at ten a.m. And um, any of the board members are welcome to attend. I can like send your uh, info along or your RSVP along. Um, some of the information that we that we covered there is um, you know there's an ongoing roof issue and concern at the property. And um, a roof RFP was distributed, um, and one architect, uh, only one architect, had replied to the RFP. So um, we're reviewing that now. Um, actually, going to have um, the facilities director at uh, Mount Lebanon and as well as Bethel Park take a look at the roof uh, for us and, and give us their um, evaluation and. and, and uh, what they think is a proper scope of work on, on that roof replacement as well. So um, it, it's unlikely that would get done this year. It's probably going to be repairs um, for this year, uh, but we do need to address it long term. Um, the enrollment in the school is uh, around 75 and anticipated to be between 75 and 78 whenever the session resumes in, in the fall. And um, that's about it. Um, all of our uh, uh, maintenance fees had uh, had come in with the exception of two 
they are providing me with the business director's uh, information, and I'll reach out to them directly and collect those <coughs> as I did last year. Thank you for your report. Mr. Corr serves as our board member of the Parkway. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, second month in a row, we have a student, Alicia Dorman. She has made student of the month out there. She's in the digital multimedia program, and she will be attending the Rose College. She's also on the honor roll. Uh, just a couple other items. We also have 25 students from Chargers Valley that are on Parkway's director's list of honor students. And senior recognition night is June 4th, and that will be at West Allegheny High School. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mrs. Lesnick serves as our Shasta rep. Um, Shasta is the South Hills Area School District Association, for anybody that's not uh, familiar with it. There are some collaborative subgroups within the um, association. Superintendents <coughs> meet, special ed directors meet as a group, and board members uh, meet as a group. The board member uh, subgroup is pretty much closed up for this current school year. And I don't have anything to report because there haven't been meetings since the last board meeting. <laughs> but we'll be back together again for the uh, upcoming school year. So, bring updates then. Thank you for that. In our finance committee report, um, we did have a finance committee uh, meeting prior to our public session and executive session. Um, we went through the same presentation uh, on the budget, and uh, we are making strides in getting the budget balanced. And uh, we will continue to keep the public and the board updated on where we're at. And we will be approving our final budget uh, in, in 18 19 at the June 26th meeting. So I'll, I'll take that. And we'll now move on to our consent agenda. So the consent agenda consists of several things this evening uh, 7.1 through 7.10. Actually, 7.11. Um, yeah. And we're going to read 7.11 into uh, the minutes right now, if you don't mind. Okay. 7.11 is a motion to approve Jolie Francis as an intermediate school principal for the 2017 2018 school year. Salary and benefits as per the Act 93 compensation plan. Jolie is with us tonight. We got to meet her in executive session. That's what we were doing. We are extremely excited to have her come into our district to head up the intermediate school as our new principal. So please uh, welcome Jolie into our district. Uh, she, she, it's great for her to be here tonight and hear the passion and the love of, the di of this district that she's going to be walking into and serving as our principal in the intermediate school. So we're excited to have her. She's extremely talented and uh, we're, we're looking forward for great things that she can do for our kids. So that's point 7.11. Does anybody on the board have questions or comments regarding the, the consent agenda? Are we going to approve them all? Yeah, we'll, uh, they'll, be, they'll be grouped together. So uh, we can we can individually discuss um, any of them. Just need your well, financial summary. I, I feel like I didn't have time to do it. Okay. And if, Would you like to pull that out? And if you could pull that out, I'd probably stay in there. Sure. Okay. Can you change orders? Can you pull those out? Vote individually on those? Okay, sure. So which ones are we talking? Seven point six. We're talking the, um, the proposed final seven, budget action. Seven six. Seven six. Yeah. You're taking that out for separate. For seven, 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 I just, we just want some individual vote. Yeah. Okay. And then seven three. The other one there. Yeah, uh, seven three. You could just do it together, but there's a bunch of them listed in there. You know what I mean? Let's, yeah. There's a lot of narratives of change. Oh, that's to get the money from the state uh, and change it. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. Separate vote on that? Yes. Okay, we'll do that. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions on any of the of the uh, issues? Yeah. 
So, so everybody understands in the uh, in the public. Seven point three approved plan con part one for change orders. As part of our due diligence through the state funding, when we incorporated our total budget for project, there is a project. Uh, there is a uh, piece of the state funding that comes back to school districts when they go ahead and make the, the uh, commitment to building new, new educational facilities. Uh, plan con is that reimbursement from the state that we get. So as, as a percentage of the total project cost, it is reimbursed to us over the course of time. Uh, when there is a change order presented as part of the cost to the, to the district for whatever reasons, we, you know, we had to make a change, there was a pipe found that we didn't know about, whatever. Those changes now become part of the total cost of the project. Therefore, we go back to the state and say, our budget is this now as opposed to this. We want reimbursed for it. So that's what, that's what, that's what 7.3 is. I think I have a question here, Mr. Julian. I'm like I said, that's you did some adjusting to your style, and it, it's very out of effect, but it's out. So thank you for that. Just, just real quickly, so on the high school campus safety officers, did only one resign? Go ahead, Sam. Yeah, so one uh, accepted position that resigned after. Okay, so I, they both did not. I thought they were both. Well, well one. One reason before you started. That was yeah, one. Right. So that, okay. So he, didn't even, he didn't even come on board. Yeah, he didn't come on board. So this is an And what's the plan is to just continue to post that on. Have a shot. 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 Through 7.11, excluding 7.6 and 7.3. 7.7, seven. not 7.6. 7. 7.7 7. 7. 7 is the middle school. Uh, I'm sorry, 7.6. Yeah. I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it like this. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can I get a motion? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
we will move on to our action discussion items, and it's now official, so thank you very much, Tori. Is she still here? She was, she's acting. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you're actually you're not hired. In. Yes. Jump <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right in. Enjoy that seat. It'll be the last way after one. <laughs> this, this is going to be your baby. This building is your baby, sir. Welcome aboard. We're really looking forward to that. Our action discussion items tonight, we're look, going to get a motion to approve the non-resident tuition student contract. This motion will be to approve the non-resident tuition student contract for the 2018-2019 school year. This contract and non-resident policy are attached for the board of you. Don, can you give us some insight into the, uh, the actual contract itself? And is there, is there any, any change from last year to this year? Um, yeah, I did, I did not work on it. So, okay. um, according to board policy, we have the ability, uh, the board has the ability to grant um, admission of students who are non-residents for tuition. So that tuition rate is annually adjusted by what the state says. This is our per capita tuition for our students. Um, parents uh, can apply for that. Sometimes there are various situations in which they do so. And um, that's obviously it's not something that I'm permitted to go into detail with that right now, but we have policy for it, there's a procedure in place, and the board has the opportunity to say yay or nay. I think it's a fair a fair number. We uh, we do offer that opportunity for people to come into our district from outside and pay tuition. So, uh, anybody has any questions or comments on from the board? Right, I'd like to get a motion to approve it. Mr. Curry second. first, Mr. Mariano second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Okay, we'll close the meeting out with anybody else who would like to make a public comment. Please step up and give us your name and address. All right, I'd like to get a motion to adjourn. Oh, do you have one? Please step up. My name is Marty Cochin. I'm a secretary. I've been with the district for 18 years. I'm president of our union, Susie Allen. I know, Sue. How are you? I've been with the district for 21 years. Do you guys mind stating your address for your record? Oh, sure. 116 Charles Drive for me. 97 Delford Drive. Thanks, Sue. The reason why we're up here is I know probably 90% of the teachers and paraprofessionals in this room, and you all are very important to our school district. I have three sons graduate through this district. I graduated here. The whole family. But there wasn't a lot of mention about how important secretaries, cafeteria workers, our lunch monitors are also very important in the history of That's sometimes what we feel. <laughs> But and also our security guards, because we are the first, the first people that the kids see, that the parents see, and we, I feel personally, that the secretaries, and they are the, we represent the school district. We are the first people that they see, and I remember we had a, we had a in-service day that we're basically. Um, but we're like we are customer service is what it is and even if you're in a bad mood you got to treat that person with respect and you always have to try to relate to that person and that's what I try to do as a secretary and I know a lot of the other secretaries do that as well so I just want to give all of us credit including the bus drivers and the buses uh, I do want to say on that note, um, Mr. Seltzer often mentions it, and I know us as a board when we talk, everybody that works at Chartier's Valley really is considered an educator. And I want you all to know that we, we thought uh, Mr. Seltzer has always shared that view, and we've all shared that view. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
So, in closing, I'd just like to say thank you all for being here. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for making Charges Valley a great place. Can I get a motion to adjourn? One thing. Yes, Mr. President. Thank you for uh, bringing attention on the furlough issue. The uh, information that was up over the district was terrible. I'm glad you brought it to light, put it to rest. Thank you, Mr. Brown. All of us, hopefully, can work together to get this thing straightened out and keep, keep on the straight and narrow. So, thank you. Anybody else? Second. Third. Of course. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.